Okay, so next what we want to do is see how we can, when we click on a cell, actually reserve it and so that the next click on it doesn't actually change the color. So that's what we want to do next. And the second thing we should uh, do next is if you see, like right now, as we have all the cells taken, once I resize the window, what's going to happen is that a WM Paint message is going to be sent to our window procedure. And because we don't right now draw what's inside, we don't remember who actually took which cell, what's going to happen is that it's going to all turn into white because, again, like I said, in our, w, in our WM Paint message, we need to remember and figure out who actually took what. Player 1 has which cell, player 2 has which cell. So one way to do that is to actually we need to use some kind of memory, right? So uh, a game board reflection of the clicks. So we need to remember each cell is taken by which player. So we want to do that next in addition to, and that will also help us to, you know, if somebody tries to click and then a second click on it, then we know if it's white, meaning empty, or if it's not. So let's see how we can do that next. Okay, so there's two ways we can do this, which is we can define a two-dimensional array, right? So that each cell here actually can be like this can be cell uh, zero, zero, right? And then, you know, uh, you can continue zero. This is going to be one, zero, two, zero. Then, you know, like based on whether you want to do row-wise or column-wise. This is one way to do it. Another way to do it is actually to actually just use a single dimension array, which is the way I want to do it here is like we give each uh, uh, cell here uh, a number, right? Like one, two, this is going to be cell zero, one, two. Then this is uh, three, this becomes four, this becomes five, six, seven and eight so basically if we have one dimensional array from zero to eight then we can basically know which of the cells is being occupied or not and that's also useful when we go to the wm paint we can use the same information to draw again uh, the board right so let's see how we can do that so get out of this close the app so what we want to do is go back to our global variables here and then introduce a game board object array. Since we said it's from 0 to 8, that means we have 9 cells. And I can initialize this all to 0, 0, 0, 3. So this is 3, another 3, and another 3. So that's our game board. Of course, there's so many ways we can initialize the game board, but for now, this is, uh, this is good enough. So let's scroll down to WM, left button down. That's when we click the left button here. So the first thing I want to do here, actually, I can move this thing up here on in, inside. So, and before we change the player turn, I think we need to reserve that spot on the game board so we can say game board and which cell to go to that's easy because we already have the index here right if you remember we get the cell number from point which is a number from 0 to 8 which is what we want so this can be index and at that index we can just use the player turn of course we can do this even can even do this before we draw this is the fir very first thing we want to do and that will reserve uh, that cell however if the next time a user clicks on the cell this is going to be can easily be taken over by the next player so to to avoid that here what we want to do is say if game board of index is actually zero is not taken 
and we can successfully get the cells uh, dimension go ahead and draw and change the player turn so typically i don't like this approach i don't like to say if this equals zero because some people might accidentally forget and do like a single equal which is uh, a potential assignment uh, even though the compiler nowadays is very smart is going to tell you that and that this is like an assignment within the if statement however some people might have the warning level turned down to level three or below so they may not some 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 people may not even bother looking at, at warnings and that might actually cause a bug that they spend time trying to figure how to fix uh, instead of this what i prefer to do is to avoid against accidental uh, assignment is just say if zero is what's inside this game board that way it's it's actually this is better this is just my opinion if you don't want to follow this that's fine too but this is how we actually guard against taking over a, a cell that's already taken this is where we highlight and remember in memory which cell has been taken okay so let's compile now hit Control f5 compile and run and see if that works I'll click this is blue this is red okay let's let's try again here now let's pretend that red wants to take over this guy okay so it's not it's not happening it cannot take it over as you can see if, however if I click here okay so now red can take it blue here red here let's pretend blue here again okay so that doesn't work the other thing that let me just go back to the code here by having this inside if this was outside then what happens is that on every single click then the user turn will change but having this inside is actually the right way to do it because no matter how many times i click it's now still going to be the next player turn which is i think it's blue right so that's so that fixes the first issue now uh, if you remember like if we resize we still have the issue with uh, see like i click now even though these cells are taken it's not showing to the it's not clear to the to the user this cell is not taken see i can take it but these ones are not we what we want to do next is close this go back to wm paint message and then see how we can draw the cells that were already taken so we can simply just draw all the cells here right just say for i equals zero i is less than nine plus plus i nine because it's because we have nine cells from zero to eight and we should we should say here uh and let me just copy the code from the other line here so here's the code you can take it and just put it here actually we need to we need more than just one line we need to take all of this just for now and then i'll clean it up below so let's remove this copy the other lines okay so we still need to get the cell rectangle so get rid of this put here rectangle rc cell i like to do it outside the for loop instead of, we don't have to reserve a variable every time every single time inside the loop so this is a better way so now our index is i because we want to do it for every single cell and we don't want to do that we want to get filled out the rectangle with so with a color right either blue or, or red so the way we do it here is simply by looking at the game board at i right whatever is inside it if this was equal to two then we we draw it if it's equal to so here's the trick if not then it's going to be either zero or one right so we should be careful here we should i should have kept that line in here sorry zero if zero only if it's not empty right only if it's not empty if it's empty then we're done if if uh, no sorry if it's not empty right if it's not empty that means it's either one or two then we should be able to draw it and lastly i don't think we need this definitely we don't need it this is just a paint drawing method so here 
this is it we draw all occupied cells so this should work let me just verify control f5 compile and run okay so let's pretend i do this that's enough resize oops i think it's it flipped around there's a bug there oh sorry so i made a mistake if it's one or maybe this is this should be right if it's two use brush two if it's otherwise use so maybe we made the bug here. Where's the bug? Third turn is one. Oh, here's the bug. Uh, I didn't pay attention to this. If player turn is one, we're using brush two. Well, that's not right. Player turn is two, we use brush two. If player turn is one, we can do it this way. This is the other way to do it, right? So that was the bug. Let me just make sure that. Yeah, so that's that's the bug. So five, run on control five. Okay, so let's do it again. Got two red, one blue in the middle. Okay, so now it's working right. Okay, good. So we fixed that bug. So now we have all uh the logic to remember uh which board uh cell is taken so one more thing just one one simple thing here which is the nine here some people may not like this there's a because it's it's constant hard coded what if it's not uh what if it's not the right value for this another way to do this is to use the compiler to help you figure it out is by using a trick i use an array size macro that's defined by windows and you just say game board this will give you how many elements inside this game board and the, if you want to know how this thing exactly works it's simply using a size of operator so like like the following size of game board this will give you in bytes how many bytes this thing is is taking if you divide that by size of game board of the first element so since it's an integer array each element is an integer right so this tells you how many bytes all the array takes this tells you how many bytes each element takes you divide the you know the whole by the size of one it gives you how many it has so uh, this will tell you exactly how many elements are in there so that that's the trick sorry about that explaining the obvious but anyways if somebody likes to use the array size then that's my preference too let's just do it this way okay final compile run and let's test this now we got two blues and three reds okay so now this is good so now we can continue to play until the all the board has been taken but so what do we want to do next right there's Two things we want to do. Probably we should figure out if there's a winner after every single click, detect if we have a winner. Let's see how we can do that next and then maybe keep adding some more functionality. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment or share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel or like us on Facebook. See you in the next video.